In the opening shots of the movie, we see Margaret White giving birth to a baby in her own home while praying hard to God. The woman is alone with her suffering and when the child appears, the distraught mother is ready to cut it with scissors, whispering that it is the Lord's test. At the last moment, however, Margaret changes her mind and embraces the child. Fifteen years later, we meet Carrie, Ms. White's insecure and battered daughter, who is on her way to class at the school pool. The other teenagers look happy and are enjoying the swim, but our heroine is huddled in the corner. The teacher notices this and puts Carrie on the serve ball. The girl accidentally hits her classmate Sue in the head, and the others laugh at her awkwardness. After class, the class heads to the locker room. While taking a shower, Carrie notices blood on her legs and it scares the hell out of her. The girl runs to the others for help, but they just laugh and start throwing hygiene products at her, and local bully Chris even starts videotaping it. Everyone is having fun, except for a terrified Carrie and Sue Snell, who feels shame and sympathy. The teacher Miss Desjardins appears in the locker room and helps the frightened heroine to get up. The teacher kicks all the girls out and explains to Carrie that she is having tomato days. Miss Desjardins takes the girl to the principal, who says that the management is obliged to inform Margaret about what happened to avoid problems, but the frightened schoolgirl asks not to do this. At this time, the cooler in the office suddenly bursts, flooding everything with water. Taking advantage of the moment, Carrie runs away. An aged Margaret shows up at the school and takes her daughter home. On the front lawn, a group of girls share a video they have made with each other. In the car, Carrie asks why her mother didn't tell her about female physiology, she was bullied about it, but Margaret says they will discuss it in the house. The frightened girl doesn't want to go in and stays in the car. At this time she is bullied by a neighbor boy, but at the sight of the heroine he falls off his bike and runs away in a panic. Carrie goes home and sees her mother banging her head against the wall and reciting a prayer. When the girl tries to stop it, Margaret tells her that she, like Eve, had a blood curse placed on her for sinning with Adam. Carrie doesn't want to hear this and points out that it's not even in the Bible. Her mother reacts very violently to these words and pushes her daughter into the closet to pray. Despite her daughter's cries, Margaret does not open the door. Suddenly a crack appears in the door, and Carrie notices that something red is flowing from the wounds on the figure of Christ. This sight frightens the girl and she cries. In the evening, Sue Snell shares her experiences with her boyfriend. She feels ashamed that she bullied Carrie instead of helping her. In response, Tommy suggests that Sue just apologize, but the girl refuses. Meanwhile, Chris and his friends decide to post a video from the shower room, creating a social media page with Carrie's name. Margaret sews in the kitchen while listening to church music. When the woman arrives in the closet, she sees Carrie asleep on the floor and kisses her, telling her she loves her very much, and Carrie responds in kind. The next morning during class, Ms. Desjardins lines up the girls and suddenly announces to them that they will run to exhaustion for bullying Carrie and posting the video on the internet, and if they refuse, they will not go to the prom. Near the end of the lesson, a tired Chris offers to rebel against such rules, but no one supports the girl for fear of not going to the prom. At school, everyone laughs at Carrie, which is very upsetting for the heroine. In the toilet, the girl is embittered looking at the mirror, from which cracks pass through it and even glass falls out. With the power of thought, Carrie picks up the shards and almost puts them together. But this is prevented by the unexpectedly appeared student. The heroine goes to the library and studies books about telekinesis, and she is very happy with this new gift. In class, the teacher calls Carrie to the blackboard and asks her to recite her favorite poem. The teacher wryly remarks that this is her longest recitation of the year, but Sue's boyfriend, Tommy, stands up for her. Carrie returns to her seat in shock, occasionally glancing at her savior. During this time, Margaret has a visitor at work, Sue's mother, who apologizes for her daughter. Having taken her daughter's dress for the prom, the woman praises the quality of the tailoring. Talking about the prom, however, causes the religious Ms. White to hurt herself. The action moves back to the school where Chris, along with her father, complains to the principal about Ms. Desjardins. The student claims that she was not involved in the incident with Carrie. In response, the teacher suggests checking Chris's phone for a video, but she runs out of the office. When she arrives at the assembly hall, 
the girl announces that she is now ineligible for the prom and gets into a verbal altercation with Sue. The girl says that the punishment is fair because the girls did carry wrong, she didn't do anything to them. Chris laughs and clarifies that Sue doesn't really care about the weird classmate, and she wants to go to the prom with Tommy. The action returns to Carrie, who is studying the literature on controlling objects in her room. The girl decides to practice and lifts a book with her mind. When Carrie succeeds, she does the same with all the textbooks and then with her own bed. With her gift, the heroine raises the tension and makes the lights flicker. As a consequence, Margaret goes upstairs, but the girl manages to pretend to be asleep. In the afternoon, Sue comes to Tommy's practice and asks him to ask Carrie to the prom to make amends with the girl. The guy says he wants to spend the prom with his sweetheart, but Sue says she's not going there at all. Tommy offers Carrie to go to the prom together, but she thinks it's another prank by Chris and runs away. When the hero catches up with the girl, she meekly asks not to make fun of her. Carrie cries in the locker room and tells Ms. Desjardins about Tommy's proposal. The teacher says that maybe the boy was being sincere with her. Later, however, the lady goes to Sue to see if this is another taunt. The couple replies that it is a sincere desire to redeem themselves. Tommy shows up in front of Carrie's house and repeats his invitation. The guy reminds her of Milton's poem and the girl agrees. An overjoyed Carrie picks out her own fabric for her dress while Chris's company watches her. At home, the girl fights with her mom about the revealing outfit and prom in general. Margaret doesn't want to let her daughter go anywhere but school. When Carrie says she will go to the prom, her mother resists. The woman says that all guys only want one thing and once again sends her daughter to the closet. Carrie refuses, and her anger makes all the furniture go up in the air. Despite her mother's prayers and terror, the girl gives an ultimatum that she will go to the prom. Boyfriend Chris and his friends come to the farm to collect pig's blood for Carrie's revenge. Meanwhile, Sue and the other students are busy decorating the hall for the prom. The girl becomes ill due to nausea and in the restroom she looks in the mirror that Carrie has broken. Young Miss White herself sews herself a lovely prom dress while Margaret casts leering glances at her. Chris's company sneaks into the assembly hall and the sight of the decorations for the graduation ball, which she will not get to, makes the girl's heart ache. Together with her boyfriend, the heroine hangs a bucket of blood over the stage. Weeping Sue puts the prom dress away in the closet, finally coming to terms with her sacrifice for redemption. Carrie finishes making her outfit and smiles. All the girls except Chris and Sue are getting ready for prom, getting their hair and makeup done and gossiping at the beauty parlor. Unlike most, Carrie is lightly touching up her face at home, and she feels ready to enjoy the evening. Margaret suddenly appears at the door of her room and tries with all her might to dissuade her daughter from going to the ball, even wanting to talk to Tommy. Seeing no other way out, Carrie hides her in the closet. Seeing Tommy, the girl embarrassedly asks if she looks good, and the guy with a smile confirms her beauty. Just before school, Carrie is very nervous, but Tommy calms her down. Everyone is having fun and enjoying the festivities. Miss Dejeradin approaches the heroine and they have a nice chat about what is going on. Tommy writes to Sue, who spends the evening with her family. Back to Carrie, the hero asks her to a slow dance, and despite the objections of the frightened graduate, leads her to the dance floor. While dancing, Tommy teaches the girl some simple moves and they have a nice time together. Suddenly Chris appears with his boyfriend, they sneak to the stage to exact retribution. The selection of the king and queen of the ball begins, Tommy offers to vote for himself and says Carrie looks magical. Chris sends Sue a message that Carrie doesn't have long to look good, and the girl runs to the school in a panic. Tommy says that whoever is chosen, Carrie is the queen for him tonight. Chris's friends rig the vote and it's time to announce the results. Sue is trying to sneak into the assembly hall at this time. The announcer calls Carrie and Tommy's names and the couple walks towards the stage. As they get closer, Sue notices a bucket over the girl's head, but before she can do anything about it, she is let out by Ms. Desjardins. Chris pulls the rope. Thick blood streams on Carrie, and someone starts a video of the girl crying on the locker room floor. Tommy is furious, he tries to stop this bullying, but a poorly secured bucket falls on his head. This becomes the final straw for Carrie. 
The girl knocks everyone down with her mind and slams the door shut. A distraught Carrie carries out a massacre of her abusers. Carrie shows extreme cruelty to her abusers as she is left cheated out of her purest prom dreams. In a panic, the survivors try to escape retribution. The only one Carrie saves is Ms. Desjardins, who showed the girl compassion and kindness. Getting out on the street, the girl sees Chris leaving in a panic and follows her. On the way, the heroine stops the car rushing into her and kills the main enemy. Suddenly, Curry regains consciousness and runs home to her mother crying. She sees that the door to the closet is broken from the inside, Margaret has escaped. The girl takes a shower and cries from nervousness. Coming out, Carrie sees her mom and rushes into her arms. Margaret cries and says that she should have immediately offered the fruit of sin, that is, her daughter, as a sacrifice to God, but she fell in love with her at first sight. Carrie cries and hugs her mother, but her mother stabs her in the back. The girl begs for mercy, but Margaret is relentless. Then Carrie uses her powers and points all the sharp objects in the room at her mother. Repenting, the girl tries to save Margaret, but she does not succeed. Sue suddenly appears in the house and apologizes. Carrie says that they have caused her suffering all her life. From the force of her grief, even the house begins to crack at the seams as the sobbing girl says she wishes her mother were alive. A terrified Sue sees that the house is about to collapse and tries to save Carrie, but the heroine suddenly sees that Sue is expecting a girl. Using her last strength, the girl lifts Sue up and pushes her out of the collapsing building. After a time, Sue visits Carrie at her grave. The movie ends with Sue giving birth and being embraced by her mother. This is the end of the movie. Thank you all for watching this video to the end. Give this video a like. Write in the comments what you think about this movie and see you in new videos.